This is the Soul Filled Sisterhood Podcast, and I'm your host, Nicole Burgess, licensed marriage and family therapist and an empowerment mentor for women. The information shared in this podcast is not a substitute, nor is it to convey professional, psychological, financial, or medical advice. If you could use such services, please seek them out from someone you trust. Now here is today's episode. Episode 58. Today's episode is sponsored by Nicole Burgess, leadership and empowerment coach to all the passionate, high achieving professional women so they can do what they love without sacrificing their personal life. Well, welcome sisters. Hey, before I dive into today's episode where I'm talking about how we can harness our emotions, especially as a highly sensitive person, I want to say thank you so much to all of you who have been leaving me iTunes reviews. Again, this is, it really does help in the in the iTunes world. Leaving a rating and review actually helps what they call the a logarithm. Again, it's how it gets ranked. I don't need to be up there in the top one chart, but it really does help other women find the podcast. So I want to say thank you so much for those of you who have gone out and left me either some, you know, just the star review and or you gave me an actual review on it. I really appreciate your support. And if you haven't, please go ahead and do that. I also want to say thank you to those of you who are on my email list, because I've got a few of you that replied back with some topics that you were really interested in. And so I'm starting to line up guests and line up those topics to cover uh, in future podcast episodes. I also want to let you know that the month of July, I will be on break. Part of that is due to feeling a little exhausted, as I said in my very episode zero, seeing no, I may go to every other week, may take some breaks here and there. That's really me role modeling that I need to do some self-care. This podcast is now uh, is a little over a year old. And again, I want to say thank you so much for all of you who have been listening and I will be back. And I just want to take the month of July off and then I'll be back with some really cool guests. At least I think they're cool. (laughs) All right. So in today's episode, I'm going to talk about emotions. I think emotions or sometimes it's referred to as feelings really gets a bad rap because people will stick them in a label of either good or bad. And emotions are not good or bad. They are just truly emotions. Like happiness is not a good emotion and sad equals a bad emotion. They're both emotions, and sometimes you can literally feel both of them at the exact same time. Some other examples of emotions are frustrated, feeling inept, incompetent. Maybe you sometimes will shame yourself. That's emotion. Sometimes you may feel loved. Sometimes you may feel optimistic. All of those are emotions. None of them are good or bad. And as highly sensitive women... We can feel things really deeply. And again, 80% of the world are non-HSPs and they don't feel and think the same way that we do, which is totally okay. That's part of what makes the world go around. Yet it gets misunderstood when we feel things deeply. And if you're listening to this and you don't know what a highly sensitive person is, I would encourage you to go back to episode nine, where I talk about the traits from Dr. Elaine Aaron's research that she's been doing since the 90s. In episode 45, I talked quite a bit about emotional quotient slash emotional um, intelligence. And as HSPs, we can do this fairly well when we're really regulated, we know ourselves, and we can manage our emotions. I talk about the five components to have an emotionally, to emotional quotient, and it's remembering the higher your EQ This really also assists in managing anxiety, which also is an emotion, like fear, worry, those are all emotions. So as I said earlier, emotions aren't good or bad. They're just truly emotions. We feel things. One issue that can arise is if your emotions are running you. And what I mean by that is if you do a lot more reacting from an emotion versus responding to it, then emotions are running your life. And part of that to raise your EQ is to be able to feel your emotion and then deal with it, cope with it, use your assertive communication skills, your I statements, be able to listen to others without 
judging how you're feeling or how they are feeling, right? So I know for many, many HSPs, myself included, I've talked before how I'm a recovering perfectionist, right? Perfectionism can really get in your way. And what can happen is you start to shame yourself because you're like, wow, I shouldn't be feeling this way. Um, Why is that still, you know, going through my thoughts? Why is this still bothering me? Part of that is knowing what your triggers are. When you know your triggers, then you can go, okay, when I start to change how I think about these specific events, that will also change how I feel about them. Whereas that emotion won't have control over me. I will now have control over it. So for example, if you have this thought, I'm being taken for granted here at my job, or my partner is taking me for granted because I'm doing all of these things, and what you're feeling is resentful or anger or hurt or disappointment, being able to communicate that to them means you have a higher emotional quotient because you are able to assert yourself on that and you're recognizing your thought you're recognizing your emotion and you're doing something about it. You're taking action. You're not just sitting in it and stewing in it. Or you're not turning that around to yourself and like, wow, I must be the worst person ever because I, I'm thinking this thought. It's like, no, you have the thought. And is it really true? And so you're having this conversation with the person. Another thing that really can run our emotions too is body posture. So in a previous episode, I talked about Amy Cuddy's book. I also talked about William James and the work and how that impacted her writing that book too. But our body posture can impact our emotions. So if you are sitting very hunched forward and your shoulders are collapsed inward, that you can feel sad. You can feel depressed just how you're holding your body. Versus if you have your shoulders back and down, you're opening up that heart chakra, you're opening up that your chest area, and you can start to feel more empowered. You can start to feel more just open, excited. Or maybe you actually grew up in a family where emotions were not expressed or not shared in a healthy way. So how you ended up coping with it as a child was you pushed them down, you ignored them which also can, if you grew up in a family where emotions were not uh, healthy or not shared in a healthy way, or you were told you were too sensitive, you were too this, too that, it's called child childhood emotional neglect, where you weren't allowed to really feel and express your emotions with your family members, parents, caregivers, whoever helped raise you. And then what you end up doing is when you become an adult is you're not sure how to actually use them in a healthy way either. So here's what you can do to begin to shift that because you were no longer that little girl. She's still in there with you, but it's reminding her that her emotions are totally okay, that there's nothing to be ashamed of, however you feel, and it's okay to allow yourself to feel however you feel. So I I let clients know when I'm working with them, it's like begin to get just curious about your emotions. Begin to identify what your emotions are. Oftentimes, you know, I I think I list about five things every single week. It's, you know, happy, sad, afraid, you know, pain. There's more emotions, you know, as I stated earlier in the podcast, there's a ton of them. You can go out to Google because I didn't create a list for you, but you can go out to just Google feelings chart and there's a whole slew of emotions that you can look at and start to get curious about. Then I would say journal about them. If you've been listening to me for a while, you know I am a big proponent of self-reflection. You can't get further in life if you're not taking time for yourself. If you're not taking time to explore where you are right now in this stage of your life. It's not good or bad. It's just you are where you are and what do you want to do going forward? Again, it's accepting your emotions where you are right now in that moment. And remember, we have many, many emotions throughout the day. I may be excited at one moment to frustrated at another moment to being in awe at another point in time to being content. So those can fluctuate throughout the time. Also, I would encourage you again to pay attention to or get curious about Do you have emotions that seem more intense to you when you're hungry 
I know for me, if my blood sugar drops down or I'm getting hungry, I feel my feelings more intensely. (laughs) Typically, you know, the old saying, hangry, that would be me. If I am hungry, I will be more easily angered due to that tolerance level. So it's not about the other person. It's where I am at, making sure I'm taking care of myself and that I'm eating on a regular basis and that I'm eating things that are really nourishing my body as well. The other thing to get curious about is just hormonal changes. As women, right, we can have those fluctuations in our home hormones, whether it's right before your menstruation cycle, whether you're going through perimenopause, menopause. Again, it's not right or wrong, good or bad. It is what it is. So with all of that being said, be kind to yourself. I find it fascinating how we are emotional beings and we can get really harsh with ourselves with that inner talk about how we're feeling like, oh, I shouldn't. Again, there's a fear-based thought. I shouldn't be feeling this way. I should be able to manage it with, with ease. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. So having compassion with yourself, grace with yourself, so that you can move through the emotion versus again, getting stuck in it. So for example, let's say you had a conflict with someone and you were feeling really embarrassed by the conflict or you were feeling frustrated that you got frustrated (laughs) during a conversation. I know I've done that before. Then it's being able to, when you've calmed down and you're, and you're more in the front part of your brain again, right, where your whole brain is not flooded with emotions, you're in a calm state again, be able to go back and repair. Have that conversation with the person. That's how you stay on your own lane, your own side of the sidewalk, as I like to say, and let the other person be on theirs. So if they don't want to talk about it, okay, then, then they don't. That's totally fine. You can respect that. But it's also knowing that you're not responsible for anybody else's emotions they are. We all have our own perceptions, our own filters. And oftentimes these filters need to be updated because they're old limiting beliefs. And I, I talked about limiting beliefs back in episode 17 and then also how to rewrite your own inner story in episode 47. One emotion that I think women often ignore, and I really encourage you to get very curious with this, is anger. I know it's, you know, there's this thing here in the the States, especially like it's okay for men to get angry, but for women and here in the States, we're usually called a bitch if that's the case. And it's, it's anger is anger. It's not, again, it's not good or bad. (laughs) And it's not for one gender and not another. Anger oftentimes though comes up if, You need to establish or maybe change a boundary with someone or some things. So it's getting curious with that. And that's where I really want you to, again, look at what are, what were the thoughts that were going on and what about this event that just happened that really stirred up the anger in me? It's not right or wrong. It's more of, do I need to update a boundary with this person? So as I was saying a little earlier, if you find yourself really getting stuck in an emotional state, let's say more than a couple hours that would be called ruminating. And oftentimes ruminating is more like, you know, the hamster in the wheel kind of thoughts. You get stuck in that. Get up and physically move. That can, one thing that you, so one thing that you can do to shift your emotional state is literally get up and move. Physical movement can begin to shift. Like I said before, those body stances, it can begin to shift the emotions, which then can shift the thinking. You can also pay attention to where you are right now in that moment. What do you see? What colors do you see? What do you smell? What can you touch? What are you touching? What can you taste in your mouth, whether you're eating or you're not eating? What do you hear? What are some of the sounds that you are hearing as you're in that moment and you're in that place where you're standing or sitting? Another thing you can do is just write down the thoughts you were having with yourself in that moment. Sometimes when we actually physically write it down, our brain will see what it is we're writing. It's like, oh, thank you. I don't have to keep saying this over and over in your mind because I think you're going to forget about it. Then it's beginning to explore. It's like, do I need to do some updating in my thought process? So for example, 
do you have this repeating thought like, geez, what is wrong with me? Because I can't stop thinking about how Linda's comment really impacted me to thinking, well, maybe Linda was having a bad day today. And while my feelings got hurt, I can talk with her about that or I can choose to just let it go and move on. Again, it's not right or wrong. It's just truly getting curious about your own emotions. Again, I think being an HSP, there are so many, many, many beautiful things about being a highly sensitive person that women often want to push down, push away. And that makes me very sad that women won't embrace their, what we sometimes like to call as their superpowers of being an HSP. So I hope you take some of these ideas today and put them into action. Find if you have a certain kind of area in your life, whether it's in your professional side or your personal side, get curious with them. Start to write those down. Just explore what are the thoughts and then those emotions that go with it. Again, our bodies are a great uh, gauge of where we hold our emotions. And if you're not sure where you hold your emotions, get curious with that too. Is sadness in your head? Is sadness in your stomach? Is fear in your head? Is fear in your chest? Again, not right or wrong. Just where do you hold that? So that when you start to feel your physical symptoms, you can start to identify your emotional state as well of where you are. And then you can start to let the other person, when you're having an interaction with somebody, let them know how you are feeling in that moment about the behaviors that they are doing or what they are saying to you and if there's anything that you need or want from them. All right, ladies, again, thank you so much for your ongoing support. And I look forward to having some other conversations with you when I start back up in August. Until then, take care. Thank you for listening. If you haven't already, I invite you to go out to iTunes and please leave an honest rating and review. In the podcast world, this really helps other women find the podcast and they can see if it resonates with others out there. So I really appreciate all your support and leaving me a rating.